brief tutorial on how I get uh, a photo like this, so this is straight out of the camera, um, to a processed photo like this. Um, so I'll st starting over with using this photo. Um, so I'm in Lightroom now, I'm not making any changes at this point, I'll just use the, the Lightroom photo. I'm going to edit it in uh, Photoshop. I uh, open as a smart object in Photoshop so that I can make changes to the raw file um, within Photoshop if I need to. Um, otherwise you're just going to be basically editing a JPEG and you don't have as much data or flexibility. Let me minimize Lightroom and it should be up in Photoshop any second. Um, so the photo that I took, a uh, pretty simple um, photo, I had two um, small flashes on each side of the can. I was shooting through Tupperware to make the light a little bit bigger than just the small light from the flashes. And then I had a flash on the camera that was shooting upwards and I was holding a piece of white foam core over the can so that basically acted as the main light and, and filled up the front. The side lights are a little bit brighter to add those highlights. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer and this is going to be the editing layer so I'm going to rasterize it so that it's no longer a smart object otherwise if you make changes to the um, when you copy a smart layer if you make changes to one it affects the other and I don't want that. I'm going to make another layer which is my um, call it whatever but it's editing layer destructive layer whatever I'll group these two things into a group just to make it a little bit more manageable So that's my group. Uh, I'm going to add a few layers just to help me um, edit the photo. I'm not going to actually going to use them. Um, so this one I'll use to be able to find the dust spots, like all this dust on the mirror, be able to see it a little bit better. Um, so what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to create a curves layer. And I'm going to make it all funky, all psychedelic. But you'll see that this will help me. have to be perfect um, but it helps me see the imperfections a little bit better so you can see things that you can't normally see on your monitor um, so that's one layer I'll call this the psychedelic layer okay um, I'll create uh, let's see I, I think that's good I'm just gonna turn this off because we don't need it right now I'll create another group this is my dodge and burn layer There's different ways to dodge and burn but this is one technique um, so I'm going to again create a curves layer. Um, this will be the brighten or the dodge. So let's just get this. It does not again doesn't have to be perfect. Um, go back to my layers. Now I've, I'm applying it to everything. I don't want that. I only want to selectively do it. So I'm going to highlight my layer mask and do Control I if you're on Windows and that inverts the mask. Um, I'm going to duplicate this. This will be darken. Okay, uh, I'm just going to right click on it, disable it for now so I can see it. Um, and then I'm going to edit it. Da -da -da -da. Let's uh, reset it and then bring it darken. So that's going to be our darken mask. Let's go back to the layers. I'm going to re-enable it. And now we have our dodge and burn so we can edit it that way. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some basic edits. Uh, then I'm going to create another layer and I'm going to add some clarity to this. Um, but I'll do that after I've done my fixing up. So first thing um, I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the dust spots and all this. So let me turn on my psychedelic layer, zoom in. So we'll just focus here first. Um, I'm going to create a selection so that I don't accidentally edit the can get it around here. All right, so I'm going to use the heal tool, healing brush. Um, I've got it sampled current and below because I don't want it sampling this actually the psychedelic layer. I only want these layers here, making sure that the psychedelic layer is above um, the, the editing layers, the actual real layers. And I'm just going to edit out all the dust spots. This 
This is a bit overkill. We're gonna make this all look basically black later, but um, you know, if we weren't making it black, this would be the way to get rid of all these dust spots. A really dirty mirror. I tried to clean it. So basically, the photo was taken with, uh, um, a, like I said, a dirty mirror. Um, and the can on top um, and the background was just a piece of uh, black um, paper that I got from the dollar store um, held up using uh, some clamps and I sprayed the uh, beer can with a water bottle just to mist it up to make it look like it's uh, came out of a cooler um, you know if you want if you're doing it professionally you'd use something other than just water you'd use something like glycerin or uh, like corn corn syrup to give it a little bit more uh, weight to it so it doesn't run down as easily but this is just for fun so not a big deal so I still see a bit of dust spots here but when we go back to the um, go back to the normal photo you know it's not so much visible so I'm not too worried I might I might spend more time let me get my move my uh, selection over to here Again, if I were doing this professionally, I'd probably spend a little bit more time on it, um, but I'm not. So healing, get rid of all the dust. I'm also getting rid of this horizon line that's between uh, the black paper and the mirror. I put on some black um, gaffer tape on the mirror because otherwise I was getting a really bright um, reflection between the seam of the um, mirror and the background, probably from uh, the, the two back. Uh, strobe lights um, kind of blasting backwards and creating that reflection. So I just put a bit of a tape and it, it helped bring down that horizon from being a very bright line to a darker line, but uh, it's still visible. All right, I think it's pretty good. Um, you know, we're not going to see this so much, especially when we darken it. So let me get rid of the selection. I'm going to zoom in and carefully fix this. Just near the can. So let's turn on, let's zoom back out. I'm going to hit control zero to basically do full screen, turn off the psychedelic layer. And um, there we go. So this is, this is the after, this is the before. So you know, cleaned up down here a bit, quite a bit. Um, so that's looking good. Um, we still see a bit of a color difference between, or, or tone difference between the background and the mirror. That's okay, we're going to darken this later. Um, actually, before we do the dodge and burn, um, maybe we're going to add, we'll add the clarity first and then we'll do the dodge and burn last. So, um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, on uh, Windows, I do sh Shift Control Alt, I believe, E, or Shift Control E. Yeah. Shift Control E, there we go. Nope, that's not it. Shift Control Alt E right the first time and that merges all the layers um, all the visible layers into a new layer so that I can edit it so that's fine there I'm going to call this topaz adjust layer um, so I'm going to use the uh, filter topaz adjust to adjust this if you don't have uh, the topaz adjust filter you can just use a, um, for example an unsharpened mask or sharpen or whatever just to add some clarity but I'm gonna I like using topaz adjust it, uh, it's a really neat plug-in there's a whole bunch of different settings you can use um, 
So I think the one I'm going to use is Clarity. Okay, so this is the Claret with the Clarity. This is without, so it's adding a bit more Clarity. I'm not necessarily going to apply it to the whole image. I'll, I can use Layer Mask to remove it from some things. So I can make some parts clear, some parts not. Yep, that's it. Okay. So um, I apply a negative layer mask. So I press Alt in the layer mask, and that uh, puts a, a black layer mask so it's not visible. So now I can paint it in. So I take the paintbrush. Um, you know, I might not have the opacity 100%. Usually I'd use a Wacom tablet, but just to be quick, I'm using a mouse. Um, I'll zoom in a bit. And then you just print it. Brush in the clarity where you want to have some clarity. And you can probably do the whole can. I'm not going to do the reflection though, I want the reflection to be faded. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, so that's that adjusts. So, the next thing we'll do is we'll do the dodge and burn. Um, so basically I want to make the background blacker. I might want to, I'm trying to add some contrast. So I might want to make the black blacker, add a little bit more brightness to the, um, to the uh, water, water beads and the reflection and get a bit more pop out of the lettering. So let's start with a brighten. Um, so I'll just add some pop to the lettering so it stands out a little bit more. That. So some, you know, some parts I might want to make it darker. Again, this is just up to your choice, but you know, maybe just add a bit of contrast. So add a bit of a dark thing here, so that there's um, light, dark, light, dark, light again. Um, so that's good. Uh, I'm just gonna make the background darker. How we what we did. So this was our original image, kind of, kind of neat, but kind of boring. You know, the, the contrast isn't there. The background's too bright. Um, you know, lacking a little bit of clarity here, a little bit of pop. Um, so we cleaned up the background. We added some clarity to the can. Um, we used this psychedelic layer to see the imperfections. Of the photo so we can clean it up a bit better we dodged and burned to ma make it a little bit more pop pop out and uh, I'll, I'll do the crop and lightroom the crop and straighten in lightroom because it's a little bit off uh, but, so let me just save this go back to lightroom it should it'll take a minute to load it's a pretty big file Now this is a pretty um, extreme edit, even though I cut some corners for time's sake, it was a extreme edit. Um, you know, you can get pretty much the same effect um, if you want to save a bit of time. Let me just create a, a virtual copy. So you can cheat too, and you can just do it in Lightroom. So, you know, using basic, oh, here's my photo. 
coming back from Lightroom, or Photoshop rather. Uh, so if I hit R in Lightroom, I can crop it a little bit, try to make sure that it's center. Maybe bring it down, zoom in a little bit, trying to get that reflection. Line up my uh, rule of thirds so that it's uh, nicely centered and occupying the, the grid there. Enter, and I would say that's my finished product. Um, so, like I was saying, if we want to um, just see what we can do in Lightroom directly, um, you know, I, I Lightroom basic flows go from top to bottom in your develop panel. Uh, so, you know, get your exposure. Crank up your contrast maybe a little bit. Uh, take down the highlights a little bit so you have more detail. Uh, maybe crank the shadows. So really have to preference. Um, whites a little bit maybe. Blacks. Might leave that there. Pop the clarity, kind of like what we used with the Topaz Adjust. Um, so get in there, and I would just use the um, smart brush, make sure masking is on, uh, exposure down, and I can paint out the background. Why is it so slow? And then if I accidentally paint on my can, I hold down the Alt key and I remove that painting. Okay, so you know, close enough. Um, I'm just basically cranking down the exposure to make it darker. Um, I guess the O key to switch overlay on and off. So this is the finished product. Need to clean up a little bit of the dust spots that didn't come out. And you know, same thing, crop it. And probably, so th this would be my finished product in Lightroom. You know, it took me a lot less time, maybe not as fun, um, but you know, let's compare the the Photoshop one to the Lightroom one. I think the, the Photoshop one's a little bit nicer, but you know they're they're pretty close. So you know, it's really a matter of preference how much time you want to invest in your project. Um, so you can get pretty close to the final product um, using Lightroom. And in fact, you could probably even get even closer if you added you know some more contrast here using the brushes um, to dodge and burn through Lightroom. Um, but anyway, that's uh, that's my editing technique. I use multiple techniques and I'm changing it all the time just to uh, see what works for me and it depends on the situation but uh, that's one example and hope you learned something. Thanks for uh, watching.